Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my home. I hope you had fun with me yesterday on my morning walk in that uh, park area next to the castle. I really enjoyed it and love to show you around and take you there. And I got so inspired by the hazel witches that they were growing there that once I was home, I immediately made a research and I nailed it down to two varieties that I want to grow in my own garden. So really happy about those decisions. Two red flowering varieties though, because I want to put them at the back of a garden at the slope. And that area I mainly focus on use of red and purple and violet. So I think that they'd be just the perfect addition there. And they'd be so good for wildlife because they flower so early in the year. So perfect for bees when they come out on a warm uh, early spring day or winter's day. I called some nurseries here and they don't carry those varieties so I will order them online but I already thought you know what that is a beauty of nowadays you can just order everything online and even shrubs and everything you don't need to compromise anymore. So I might need to wait a little bit for them to arrive but that doesn't really matter. I'm happy that I found them and this is going to be one of my future videos with you where I'll be planting two hazel witches so I hope you're excited about that. But today's video is not about planting it is about something else it's about sowing. So this is kind of like the continuation of one of my previous videos where I was storing some seeds with you guys. If you remember right, I did some illustrations for seed packages and one of you even won a seed packet. So I'm really happy that I could send it out. It is on its way to Canada, maybe it even arrived and fingers crossed it arrives and fingers crossed that you will have great success and fun with those autumn anemones because those were the ones that I sent out. So have fun with them, Diane. Um, I prepared already everything in the kitchen to get the seeds uh, going. So I've got all the materials and everything that I need for today's project. And honestly, the garden here really starts for me doing this. Like when I get my first seeds into the modules, for me, this is kind of like when I kickstart the new season. So I'm really excited to share this moment together with you guys today. I've prepared everything here on the kitchen counter and this is the ideal area to do this project because I have a good space here. It's easy to clean off and I've done it here in the past already and we are in January and let's face it, who wants to do something like this outside in the garden shed in the freezing cold? If you have a heated greenhouse maybe, but I don't so. And anyways, I'm in Dusseldorf now so I could only do it outside on the sidewalk of a street and that would be so random and weird. So obviously I'm doing it indoors. And these will stay inside for quite a long time now before a hard them off outside so I think it's just one of those lovely things how you can start the new gardening year indoors you sow your seeds and your mind goes immediately to those happy places and where you want to put them how the colors are going to look how the plants are going to thrive and everything so this is something that really excites me and just brings the joy to the new garden year so what I have is I have these little miniature greenhouses basically that are ideal for sowing because they are quite narrow and long as you can tell so they fit perfectly on a windowsill if you don't really have like a dedicated area such as I do I don't have like any kind of like growing lights or anything I really do it like this put it on the windowsill fingers crossed gonna work and it works most of the time so this is kind of like that way on how I do it these greenhouses they are quite easy and simple actually so you have this dome thing here with these two lids on the top so you can kind of like open them up if you want to allow some extra uh, air to come in here you don't need to use them though you might want to use them but sometimes from my experience when you put the dome on top of it what happens is there is like this miniature climate in there and the seeds start to germinate extremely fast but then they start getting laggy quite fast that is my experience so I'm not really sure if I'm even going to use a dome this year around or if I try it without them and see what happens or if I just put them on like every other day maybe I really need to figure how I'm going to do it. So the base, this is kind of like this big plastic crate basically, which is quite good because it has no drainage holes or nothing in there. So this is really nice and easy for the watering. And you can tell that it has these circular modules in here. So you could actually buy some plugs and just put them in there. But they were of plastic, so I'm not going to use those because this year I want to try something that I did in the past once. And I found a big time with that. It didn't work out at all, but I'm going to try it again. Again. So I bought these like natural plant based or paper based. I'm really not sure. I checked the label. It didn't say what it's made of. It just said that it is recycled and it breaks down. And I can tell you it smells kind of cool. It really smells as if Alfie had a bad snack on the sidewalk where I'm not sure what she ate and her breath is not the best. This is exactly what they smell of like. So I was a little like, I, I just unpacked them and I was like, Ooh, open the window, but all right. Once the fresh soil is in there, I hope that the smell will be better. So they fit in here quite nicely as you can tell. But the beauty of these is, 
they are made of natural material. So when I fill them with soil and I water them, over the time they would just like, naturally they will get mushy, that's what happens. And I think they might even expand a little bit, which will be a good thing, I guess. Um, when you plant your plants, you don't need to kind of like pot them out of your pot and just put them in the soil. You could basically break these apart and then put the entire module into the soil because this will break apart further. Ideally, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna check it, I'm gonna report you what happened last time with me when I did it. Couple, couple years ago. I was not that experienced with my sewing regime back then. I was probably eight years ago, I would say. Um, for two weeks, it looked perfect. I had germination, everything was nice. And then suddenly overnight, I had a thin layer of white mold covering the entire thing and the entire flat was actually for the trash in the end. Um, but what happened is I had the dome on for the entire time and I kind of think that I created such a humid, warm microclimate on the windowsill that this might have triggered something for the mold to start off. Maybe the soil wasn't good, maybe it had nothing to do with the modules, I really don't know. I did a research. Um, there were a lot of conflicting information about it, so I don't really want to say too much about it. This is just what happened to me last time. Fingers crossed it won't happen this time around. So everything that I'm going to sew today will happen in these, but I have some plastic containers, but really sturdy good ones in Gdansk, and I'll also do a little bit of sewing in there as well, basically. But today I'm going to sew everything in modules. Um, because most of the seeds have a good decent size, but one, one seed is quite small. And normally I would just use basically like a seed tray and just put them in there and spread them evenly and then pinch them out afterwards. But this is the smallest size that I could find in the garden store here. And I didn't carry my smaller sizes with me to Germany. So I was like, okay, even the smaller ones, I try to space them out a little bit in here and then let's see how it goes. But this is what I've prepared already so far. So I have got various of these here. Then I have got my seeds, obviously. So I've got the ones that I uh, prepared with you last time. The anemones, they were the ones that I sent out. So I went to the park again. I have like made a nice packaging. So I just got like a little bit of fluff here for the autumn anemones left. And then some other seeds that I want to sow with you today. I've got like some delphiniums. I've got artichokes. I'm going to show you everything that I'm going to sow today. I'm only going to focus on perennials and one vegetable, which is actually also kind of a perennial. Uh, I'm not gonna sow any annuals today. And the reason for it is that most of the annuals, they will grow fairly fast um, because the life cycle is just different compared to a perennial normally, because perennial, they put a lot of energy into growing roots, which is really important for them. And this is also why I start this early of the year with the sowing, because I wanna make sure that the perennials have the opportunity to build a strong and good and really well-developed root system throughout the entire year and growing season up until winter when they're going to dormancy because I really want to make sure that they survive the winter while an annual has a different life cycle. It doesn't really need to develop such a big root system. It just needs to develop more of a top growth, more flowers, keeps on flowering. It needs to produce a lot of seeds so it can kind of spread and this is the different life cycle basically. So I already ordered a couple of annuals as well. I'm going to show you I think in a second but what I'm going to do first is just like talk you through how I prepare everything show you the seeds and then show you how I sow them and what I do with them afterwards. I hope this is going to be interesting for you. Obviously the first thing that I'm going to do need to do is put some soil into the single plugs and what I do is I buy a special soil that is made for your sowing and the reason for it is that when it comes to the sowing, I would not recommend you to use any of your homegrown garden compost because it might not be sterile. Eventually, I don't know what you put on your compost, but sometimes I might put like, if I'm um, in my mind, put, I don't know, something that I cut back and had already seeds on it on there, or like some stingy nettles or something, whatever, but it might be contaminated. So this is definitely not what you want to put into these little plugs. You really want to have a sterile soil. And on top of it, you want to have a soil that is not fertilized or too rich or anything, because when the seedlings start, or the seeds start to germinate, your seedlings, they have very thin and fibrous roots and they could burn quite easily. And when the soil has fertilizer in it or is too rich basically, those tiny roots eventually might burn and your plant is going to die back. So this is why you can just go to your garden center and buy a specially prepared garden soil, which is ideal 
ideal for this project because this is really what makes your little seedling happy and I always use it like this and I could just tell you this is perfect for it because it's, um, the texture is nice, it's lofty, it's light, which is always good because then the roots have easy access and they can really start nice fibrous roots because you do not want to use any kind of soil that is too rich, too heavy or clay even because clay that might be like alert, alert, that was not going to work at all. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not even going to wear gloves today because the soil should be dry because that was kept inside in the garden center, not outside. So it was not frozen. It's not, well, that was not frosted into sort of anyways, but it's nice and warm room temperature. And yeah, oh, it feels so nice. It feels nice and lofty and everything that I want from it. And I got my Hoover actually already standing in the back. <laughs> How am I going to do it now? I try not to make a complete entire mess out of this now. So what I'm going to do, just get in here with my hand, take a module, and then basically I just fill it up and everybody has their own system. This is kind of like my system and how I do it. And then I just press it in there basically. So I just always go over with a little more soil. And then when I do it with your hands, you can even feel how much soil there is in each and every single plug. Because sometimes when you just like put it in there, the soil is really lofty. And then when you water it, it's kind of like just sinks down into it and there's not a lot of soil left. So you really want to make sure that you kind of firm it in, that there is just enough soil in there because I try not to pot them on if it works. I need to see how fast they develop. Um, this is really pending on how I need to continue with these, but eventually I do not need to pot them on. So this is all I'm going to do. This is how it looks like. You don't put any fertilizer, nothing in here. And this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to prepare this flat and I have another one standing here. And after that, I'm just going to flip the phone and just talk you through the first seats, show you the seats and just show you up close how I'm going to put them into the single plugs. First two things I want to sow today are for the veg plot and eventually also for the back of a slope for some of the annual and perennial areas because artichokes are quite ornamental and really beautiful and they come from the family of thistles. So you actually, what you see here, the actual artichoke, this is the flower head, like the flower bud before it bursts open. This is what you can eat. But even if you don't eat it, if you just allow it to flower, they are really beautiful and gorgeous. So I intend on growing two different varieties. First one, Imperial Star. This is a very common variety that I've seen quite often already in the past. And the second one, I want to grow one of these like darker varieties. It's called Adimaro, Adimaro, whatever you want to pronounce it. This is what I show you so you can just see up close what kind of varieties I am actually growing today. The lovely thing when you're not collecting your own seeds, when you buy seeds, is that you get all the information at the back of the seed package. So here it really shows you all the different information that you need actually for sowing or even like for the plant, for the plant life cycle. Like it needs full sun, it shows you how much water it needs, a lot of water, well that's great. Um, it grows 1 meter 20 in height, which is quite a lot actually. The spacing 90 centimeters and the single seed should go 2 centimeters into the soil when you plant it. And then like all different kind of extra information. So it says life cycle perennial, but hardiness no. That is kind of a little conflicting. I think this is funny. So I think in theory it is a perennial if you are in a Mediterranean area probably, but for me hardiness is definitely no. That is for sure. If it is a mild winter then yes, but normally no it's not really. So what I'm going to do now is let's just cut it open. So 
I can show you this seeds. I never bought seeds from this one. They are organic seeds actually, by the way. Oh, see, they come in this extra envelope here. Artichoke seeds are actually fairly good and big in size and there are a lot in here. I don't think I'm gonna sow all of them. I'm gonna have way too many artichokes then. So let me see how many I will grow. But th this is how they look like, kind of like sunflower seeds in a way. Very comparable in size and color and everything. So what you do when you sow your artichokes is, so let me just make some space here. Um, this is when I say like the modules might be a little bit too small maybe for the artichokes actually because artichokes, they build tab roots and that means that they will have a quite deep root run and those are not the deepest. So after germination at one point, I might need to uh, put them into a bigger pot, but that is all right. It's only the artichokes or the other things that I'm going to sow. They don't have the same problem. So all I'm going to do now is I come in with my finger, very professional. Just take one seed, because this is like station sewing. I put just one seed in one module, put it in there, and then into the soil it goes. And this is why it is important to read the information at the back of your package, actually, because you do not want to put it on top of the soil. Because some seeds have different kind of requirements, what they need, actually. Like when it needs to be like two centimeters into the soil, even though maybe I just make like one centimeter now, but that still works, um, it germinates when it's dark while other seeds, they germinate when it's light. So this is why you really need to read the information and if you collect your own seeds, do your research and see under what conditions a plant likes to germinate. Because there are also a lot of perennials, for example, that do um, need a good cold spell in order to germinate at all. Like there are those kind of plants like phlox, for example, or bells of Ireland. They definitely do need a period of cold in order to germinate, it triggers something inside the seed, while others, like zinnias, for example, they don't need that. They really need like warm temperatures, 20 plus degrees, in order to germinate well. And this is the little research that you need to do before you do any kind of sowing, basically. So you can tell this goes fairly fast. I'm just explaining a little bit. And in the meantime, I could just pop the seeds in here. And now I've got like three, six, nine, twelve. Okay, let's do one more row just in case if not all of them are going to come true or some of them are like a little weak. Sometimes last year I did some cardoon and they are part of the artichoke family and they had blight on them. So I think this is half of a 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, the other one might be a little more. But yeah, this is what I'm going to do. So the next thing is I just continue with the imperial star. I just cut them open for you so you see them. I can tell you already. Oh, see, they are not in a little extra bag. They're in here, but they look exactly the same. Same size, even the same color and kind of this grayish minty green. So I do exactly the same thing. But for me, in order to separate them, what I need to do obviously is to label them so that I know later on what kind of plant I actually have here. Where is my label now? Here it is. So I'm not wearing glasses, Ademaro. Ademaro. And just by the kind of leaf, I know that it's an artichoke, so I don't need to write artichoke on it. So one, two, three, four, five. There you go. And then I will just continue with the next one here and just fill up the entire flat basically with the artichokes. And then let's continue with the perennials. Now to the perennials, even though that artichokes are perennials as well in a way, but for me, I see them as like a vegetable crop mainly. So yeah. This is um, delphinium. I love delphiniums. They are one of those plants that come with a lot of childhood memory and I just love them because they come in an array of beautiful colors that I really enjoy. They come here, you can tell this is a mix. So it's like different kind of blues, a little white, a little pink eventually. They also come even in like cerulean and beautiful blue shades, like icy blue, wonder, wonderful, steely blue. But I really wanna have colors like these here. Um, I wish I could have found a pack that only had like the blue ones and like these really purple ones because they are pure purple. There is no like dark black, white, any mixing, any tipping, anything in there. It's just a pure simple color and this is exactly what I want to have. Uh, if I just look at the information at the back quickly. So germination, 14 to 20 days, which seems a little long from my experience. Um, 
indoor is easy. Do, 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 do. It doesn't really say anything about the depth, but normally I don't really put them deep. I, don't, I would never put them two centimeters deep. I just always put them almost on top of it and don't really cover them, maybe just with a really thin layer of additional soil. When it comes to delphiniums, even though I said that they are one of my favorite ones, they are a slug and snail magnet. And I've tried that three times in the past already, or two times maybe. And each time was a little bit of like a disappointment in the end. But after a couple of months of Instagram and seeing so many gardens growing beautiful delphiniums, I was like, I really, really want to have delphiniums. So I tried again, tried to sow them and see a lot of seed in one pack. There's even more inside of here. Oh my, I'm not sure if I sow all of them. So this is how they look up close. A little geometrical, almost like little triangles in a way. I hope you get to see it right. So a lot and a lot of seed comes with one of these packs, but the beauty of delphiniums is that you could collect the seeds in the end. This is something I did in the past and the germination is really easy on them. So all I do with the delphiniums now, if I just get my modules here, I'll just take seeds and I would put probably two to three seeds into one single module, one just flipped over there. And then I just gently, gently firm them in and this is all I'm going to do with the delphiniums basically. I already put my labels in here so this entire area will be dedicated to delphiniums but since there are so many, many seeds and I know that this is a magnet for slugs and snails, maybe what I do is that I will maybe do a little more delphiniums. I need to see in a second, yeah, I think I will. So let me just like try and get them back in here. Uh, so I don't, yeah, that is good. So that they're not everywhere because I just want to show you everything in one go now, how things are looking. So these are the aquilegia that I collected in my garden and I store them together with you. And aquilegia, they actually spread geniusly uh, in your garden just wild. Like they naturalize really, really wonderful. So this is why actually, it's not one of those plants that you desperately need, need to propagate, but I like to do it and I really like this variety in particular. So this is why, whoa, okay. This is what I'm gonna do it. This is how the seeds are looking, kind of black, a little bit like black sesame in a way, very similar and comparable in size and shape and everything. So when it comes to the sowing, I do exactly the same thing to what I just did with the delphiniums, just sprinkle two, three seeds, probably three, very thin and lightly in here, just gently put a little bit of fresh soil over it and that is all I'm going to do. So this is really, really easy and Aquilegia always has a good germination, right? This is definitely one of the easier plants to sow. Back they go for now. Then the next one, again, something that I collected with, or not collect with you, but that I store together with you. So these are asters of unknown varieties and no idea what they actually are. When it comes to the asters, they have almost like these little parachutes here. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it without you because it's gonna be too difficult now with a camera, but I try to find seeds that look quite good, big and decent in size. Maybe there is already one in here because I researched how it should work and you do not want to use like the tiny itty bitty flimsy ones like this one is a no-no. Well, this one here is a lot thicker and looks better. So this is actually what I would use. And then, can you see it? Yes, you can. Just put it here and then again, gently firm it over, just really, really thin. So I would just put like three into each and every single one, maybe four, because I have no idea how they germinate. When it comes to asters, there are varieties that, uh, do germinate um, with warm temperatures and others that don't. So this is a little bit of a game now, I'm not sure. So I'm not gonna use too much space for the asters. Last thing are the anemones. And when it comes to the anem anemones, like I already showed you in my last video, they really look like uh, cotton actually when you look at them. And all these little dark spots that you can see in here, this is what the actual seeds are. So in nature, it kind of works like they are sitting on the stem and wind comes in and we'll just blow it away basically. So it finds its spot somewhere else. These are some that I would normally not put in modules or so separate. I would just put them in an entire seed tray, but this entire seed tray is just way too big for these couple of ones. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here and just try to break it open a little bit. 
and just spread it out like this. There are a lot of seeds and we need to see how the germination rate is and everything. But this is what I'm going to do. Just kind of spread them. Always take, can you see it actually now? Yeah, you can see it. Take a little bit out of it where I have seeds and the fluff because I could not possibly separate it. I mean, I could probably, but that would be really tedious now. So this is all I'm going to do. Just really make sure that they sit nice in here. Yep. So this is what I'm going to do now, basically. I just wanted to show you plant by plant what I'm going to do. So what I'm sowing in here and what I start off, all of those are perennials, which is really wonderful. I'm really excited about the delves. I hope that they will be off for a flying start. So what I'm going to do now is go through the entire seed tray, sow them, and then there's one last thing that I want to show you and talk about. So there we sit with the seed sowing and I think you could see quite well the difference between like the bigger seeds and the smaller seeds. So the artichokes are definitely bigger ones and this is why they need to go a good amount deep into the soil. Same goes for for example if you sow lupins, sweet peas or sunflowers, exactly same regime. But all of the perennials that I was sowing today, they have fairly thin and smaller seeds. So you really make sure that they sit idle on top of the soil and just cover them gently if and that is all you do because they really need the light in order to germinate. So the last thing that I just want to talk you through is how I water them because this is also quite vital I think. What I do now is I would not water them from overhead because if you do that at this point what happens is the soil is still quite lofty and light and if I water from overhead all the seeds might just go to that area where the water drains off and then at one point you have maybe three, four, five seeds collecting in that one spot in your module and that is not good, obviously, because I try to space them out and I want to keep it like that. And there's a very easy trick on how to achieve that. So I would just take out one of the modules now and then I happen to have water from the balcony. So this is rainwater in here and I prefer using rainwater for those projects just because depending on where you live, like here in Germany, Poland as well, the water that comes out of the faucet is drinking water and it has no chlorine or no chemical nothing in it so you can drink it but here we have quite hard water and I don't think that this is ideal and if I happen to have rainwater this is the best because this is like when once I plant them out in nature obviously this is exactly the water that they will get and that they will feed on rather than kind of like prepared or processed water that comes out of the faucet so just think about the panning on your area where you live maybe you want to do the exact same thing so all I do now is I come in with my watering can and then I pour water into the plastic crate down in here and don't fill it up. Like maybe mm, 10%, maybe a little more. This is how much water I have an eye on it. This is how much water I fill in here. And the reason on why I do it like this is quite easy. Because now the water sits here at the base of it. So no, if I flip it, it's gonna wash out. You need to imagine. So the water basically is up until here basically now. And the soil um, will gently now start soaking up all of the moisture. And what happens then is the moisture comes from the bottom and then it will pull the seeds that are sitting on top of it down into the soil so that they have a real good contact with the soil and they can't wash away anywhere now. So this is the best and easiest thing to do. So now I'll just put my one module back in here. I have my cloche which goes over it. 
and it fits perfectly with the labels and everything. I checked that already. Something you might want to check before. I haven't, but now I'm in luck. And what I'm going to do is I just open the lids on the top and I have a quick eye on it, like in half an hour or so, if the soil is nice and moist. And what you want to do now is check every other day if the soil is kind of like steady moist. You do not want to overwater it and you do not want to let it dry out completely, especially once the germination process has started. This is quite vital for this. What I do um, when I feel it is maybe dried out a little too much, depending on how much time I have of course, I will come just with a sprayer of water and just gently spray over it to just moisten it every single day just a little bit at one point. But this is just like my own method and preference on how I do it. Obviously once the seeds have started to germinate and the first roots are in there you can just do easily an overhead watering because um, they will stay in place that is kind of like the easy thing to do what I do now is close them off and then off they go onto my windowsill and I plan on giving you updates every now and then on how things are looking but obviously this is just the kickoff basically what I do for my new veg plot I will start sowing a lot and a lot of vegetables and quite some of them I think I might start indoors as well so that they have a good start. And I will also do a lot of annuals that I will start indoors and obviously dahlias I will also start indoors. So there will be quite some videos at one point about like preparing stuff that will go outdoors at one point because I like to start things a little earlier in the year. And I think those are good moments just to show you what happens in here. So I hope you have fun with today's video. Maybe you learned something. Um, maybe you could even see how excited Alfie was about what I did today. At one point when I was just filming how I just spread out the seeds, she was just lying next to me sleeping. So she was so not impressed about anything that was going on here. But I know how I can impress her because it's time for us to get ready because I'm going to my parents this afternoon. So I'm going to take her with me, obviously. And so we go for a little walk. And I hope that you have nice plans for today as well. Maybe you visit somebody, maybe you just have lovely weather. I don't. It's a grim day again, it's kind of rainy and drizzly, but so it is. I would love to welcome you in one of my future videos. Up until then guys, take care, bye.